During a preview for Flintlock The Siege of Dawn, we saw a 15 minute gameplay walkthrough of the upcoming open world action RPG. It's looking like developer A44 Games is building upon its debut title, Ashen, to bring an even heavier focus to fast paced combat while still supporting its style of a cooperative focused, souls like experience. Here are 9 things we learned about Flintlock during the preview. Mechanically, Flintlock's combat sort of looks like how you fight in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, with an armor system that works in a similar manner to Sekiro's posture. In Flintlock, enemies have two different meters that you have to worry about while in combat. The red bar is an enemy's health, while the yellow bar above that is their armor. The yellow bar fills as you damage an enemy's armor, while the red bar empties as you damage the enemies themselves. Attacks deal damage, while both attacks and parries chip away at an enemy's armor. When the armor bar is filled, protagonist Nora is able to land a devastating execution attack against her foe. In most cases against normal enemies, it looks like these executions kill her targets outright. However, stronger enemies and bosses can seemingly withstand multiple versions of these attacks. They're still worth doing though, because when it comes to these more powerful targets, Nora can use this execution attack to rip away an enemy's literal armor, like a shield or breastplate, that makes them more vulnerable to her attacks. In Flintlock, an enemy's armor meter begins to deplete if you back off, encouraging you to be aggressive in combat and rely on parries and dodges instead of blocks. <laughs> In combat, you can control Nor's companion, Inky, to stun enemies and stop their armor meter from depleting, but it looks like you can only do this to one enemy at a time. Nor has armor too. Powerful attacks like unblockable attacks that are symbolized by a red aura can cut into that armor and damage it. Once it's broken, Nor takes increased damage from enemy attacks. Thankfully, there's a way to replenish Nor's armor, which leads us into our next point. How Nor finishes off a foe will determine what sort of resources she gets for the kill. Both your armor and bullets are limited, and you'll need to kill enemies to replenish your stores in both. Finishing off an enemy with Nor's axe replenishes her bullets, while executing them with a firearm fixes her armor. In order to remain at full strength, you'll have to mix up your combat style and finish off groups of enemies with both your blade and your bullets. <laughs> So it looks like Nora is going to hold onto her trusty axe for most of the game, she can unlock and use a variety of firearms beyond the pistol she starts with. An especially useful looking one is the flintlock rifle, which allows Nora to freely aim and snipe targets from further away. It seems to incorporate a Gears of War style timing mechanic on the reload as well. We also saw that Nora can unlock a hand mortar, which allows her to deal a ton of damage in an area of effect explosion. Nora can also use handfuls of gunpowder while exploring or fighting. This allows her to double jump in the air and extend the distance of her dodge. Like Ashen, Flintlock is a Souls-like. You've got your bonfire resting points, health potions, rhythmic combat, and several other similarities to From Software's Soulsborne games. However, in designing Flintlock's combat, A44 also took a lot of inspiration from 2018's God of War. Nora's companion, Enki, is basically her Atreus. You control Enki's actions, directing him to stun or distract enemies, buff Nora's attacks, or help Nora move throughout the world. Enki also speaks to Nora, even warning her of coming attacks. Powerful enemies here, even for you. Best to tread carefully. A44 art director Robert Bruce describes Nora and Enki's bond as a strong companionship or buddy cop situation, saying that the two have the same goal, even if it is for different reasons. And similar to Kratos and Atreus in God of War, the evolving dynamic between Nora and Enki is at the heart of Flintlock's narrative. Flintlock does not build on Ashen's story, though it does expand on its emphasis in terms of repopulating a fantasy world. As you push further into Flintlock's world and defeat the enemies that have occupied towns and buildings, it will allow life to return to these areas. Similar to the folks who come to reside in Vagrant's Rest and Ashen, it looks like most of the NPCs who re-inhabit these areas don't do much beyond filling the space with life that doesn't want to viciously kill you. The especially helpful characters seem to be a part of your caravan, Flintlock's main hub area that moves throughout your journey. 
A44 created a new language for Flintlock, which is spoken by the gods that Noor is hunting. The studio worked with linguists to ensure a consistency across the entire language. So if decoding real-world foreign tongues or fictional video game languages is your thing, you may be able to figure out what the gods are yelling at Noor as she's shooting them in the face. <laughs> Flintlock will be an open world game, but the world will be divided into three separate zones. A44 looked to its home country of New Zealand for inspiration when constructing the geography, architecture, plants, and creatures of these three zones, though each one will possess its own unique style. The gods that Nora's hunting inform the world around them, so you can, in turn, look to how each of the three zones are built to get hints as to what gods may make their home there. For example, the knightly god of knowledge resides in a tower within Sybil, which is a port city. Sybil is built on an ancient archive and is the center of learning in the world of Flintlock, operating as a hub of trade, knowledge, and commerce. Flintlock may be an open world that will encourage you to explore in multiple directions, but you won't have a mount to speed that along. Nor will be forced to walk for most of her adventure, though there will be select narrative moments where she takes alternative forms of transport. You can unlock new navigational abilities though. For example, using Enki, Nor can teleport to certain locations marked by glowing symbols, allowing her to bypass parts of the world. In the demo we saw, one of these glowing symbols appeared in a place that allowed Nor to teleport over a building and past an area she'd completed before, allowing her to more quickly return to a tough enemy encounter without going through a gauntlet of foes first. Flintlock has coffee shops, though they aren't manned by the sort of baristas you're used to. The owners of these shops are these multi-armed creatures that actually hold up their own face with one pair of arms, while they use sign language with their other arms to communicate with you and the other patrons. You can visit coffee shops to rest up and hear gossip that will lead you into new quests. You can also use these shops to fast travel, allowing you to return to previously visited zones more quickly. And those were our major takeaways from the preview. For more on Flintlock, be sure to check out GameSpot for a written preview of the game.